and be glad in it. We praise you, for you are a great and awesome God, ancient of days, never made a mistake, with us each and every day. 
we give you honor. We give you glory. There is none like you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. We invite you now by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to have your way tonight. Lead us to the rock that is higher than we are. We give you glory. We come to say, God, we need thee. Every hour, we need thee. So thank you now that you'll use our pastor once again as we sit at your feet to listen to your word, to hear what thus saith the Lord for the living of these days. Oh, we thank you that you are speaking, God. We thank you that you lead and guide us and direct. So God, right now, we just want to say thank you for being the great God that you are. Thank you how you kept us through dangers seen and unseen throughout this day. Thank you that you have us all in the palm of your hands. And thank you, God, for the plan that you have for each and every one of our lives. We magnify you tonight. We exalt you tonight. We lift your name on high. For there is no name higher, no name greater than the Lord our God. We praise you. Use him. Use Pastor E like never before. And we thank you and ask your blessings upon each and every member of our St. Philip family. Those who are on their way. Those who are worshiping by way of the internet tonight, oh gracious God. Bless them. And may they know that it is you who is speaking to them tonight. We'll continue to lift your name in praise. Sing songs unto your name. We glorify you. Thank you, gracious God, for hearing our prayer and doing what you do best, going beyond and having your way. But there is none like you. It is in that wonderful name, that matchless name, the name that is higher than any name. It is in that glorious name, the name that we call on each and every day. We give you glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray and all God's children say it. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, don't stop right there. Just begin to call his name Jesus. He's so awesome, Jesus. He's so amazing, Jesus. It says, oh, it says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How many of you know that something happens when I call you? Let's lift it up. Say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call his name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Something happens when I call. Something happens when I call. Say when I call. Say you. Jesus. Say his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whatever you need it from us, say his Jesus, name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens. Say something happens. When Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thy is beginning to get healed when Jesus, you call on Jesus, Jesus. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. Something happens. Say Jesus. When I call. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call him like you love him. Jesus, call him like you need him. Something happens when you 
found in John 14 verses 23 through 27. There you will find these words. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our God. Something happens. Say, something happens when I call on Jesus. Something happens when you 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 call on Jesus. Now come on and fellowship with somebody. Shake somebody by the hand. Give them a fist bump. Do whatever y'all need to do tonight. Those of you that are in the building, if you're online, somebody in the comment section online, just greet somebody else in the comment section. Good evening, good night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say something. 
call his name so Jesus. these words after me, Lord, I believe in your word, I stand on your word, I trust in your word, and he opened their minds that they might understand the scriptures. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. Thank you, praise team, musicians, thank you so much for uh, beginning our study tonight um, by inviting the presence of the Lord in the building through praise and worship, certainly to our ministers and to all of you, to Lady E, uh, those of you that are worshiping online with us tonight, welcome. We're so glad that you all are here. Praise the Lord. We're praying that you all will make community space online as we have made community space in this building tonight. And uh, we're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, I want to um, uh, just invite you to take the road to Pentecost journey with us here at St. Philip. I think it's important that we now focus our minds on Pentecost and what that means for the body of Christ, what that means for us as believers. And uh, as we go throughout our time and our study, even tonight, our, our, our teaching, our preaching, our meditations, our prayer life uh, will all be centered around Pentecost for these next few weeks, uh, dealing with uh, what is considered the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what that looks like and what that sounds like. Um, there's certainly different iterations of that, different teachings that can come forth, uh, but we're going to explore the scriptures in a deep way because no matter what, the Holy Spirit is all about work. All right, it's all about work. It's more about work than what we would ever give, give it credit for. All right, so I want to kind of deal with that. Uh, we in the Christian church, in the body of Christ, we get super excited. We get super amped about resurrection. And I want to suggest to you tonight, you ought to be just as, if not more, excited about Pentecost than we are about resurrection. All right, I know it traditionally, uh, we all come to church on Easter, <laughs> and we all deal, deal with that from the resurrection event. One of the most powerful events, and I consistently say this, uh, the cross is a great symbol. The more powerful symbol is the empty tomb. But then, then the next level after that for us is actually Pentecost. All right? And it's important that we understand that. So, Taking notes, uh, we're going to uh, begin our study tonight uh, as it relates to Pentecost. Now, Pentecost comes 50 days after the resurrection, and, and we kind of bounce that around a little bit, but uh, from all intents and purposes, 50 days after the resurrection should be Pentecost, all right? Uh, Pentecost actually means 50, all right? And so you start dealing with that, and you're dealing with the different feasts of the Bible, we're going to talk about the different feasts as well. We want to center most of our study around the Pentecost event that happened in Acts chapter number two. All right. How many of y'all actually grew up AME? You've been AME all your life. All right. How, how many of you all ever had any kind of Pentecostal backgrounds? Praise the Lord. I never would have guessed. Uh, <laughs> but uh, those that grew up uh, the Baptist background, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you grew up in the Baptist background like myself, you catch the Holy Spirit, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it's running to, but you catch it. Oh, such and such caught the Holy Ghost at church. Uh, if you grew up in the Pentecostal background, uh, you tarry for the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is, is a different inner work in Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost. Uh, if you grew up in, in the AME church, you're scared of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I forgot this being streamed. Y'all don't get me in too much trouble. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to suggest tonight that your 
And this is, this is from Dr. Coletta Vaughn. This is not even my statement. Your, your pneumatology ought to be stronger or match your Christology. Your, your Christology, your pneumatology, your study of the Spirit, your understanding of the Spirit of God ought to be just as strong, if not more powerful, than your study of the Holy Spirit. The, and and the, the Holy Spirit, hear me, we'll make the mistake, I'll make the mistake, okay? I won't be perfect in doing this, but I will call the Holy Spirit it. And we should not refer to Holy Spirit as it. In a real sense, we should say he or him, but if we are being actually correct, we should be saying she. All right? Uh, <laughs> because pneuma, pneuma, when you start dealing with pneuma uh, in the Greek, you're dealing with feminine, feminine uh, pronouns. Okay? Not, not masculine. All right? So, uh, y'all, you, what's the name of the movie? Um, the Shack. How many of y'all ever saw or read the book? Okay, read the book or watched the movie The Shack. Even in the movie, it was a woman. The Holy Spirit was a woman. A black woman, I think. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I ain't surprised. All right. <laughs> so, uh, we want to study it from that. I will have the habit again. And I'm not saying I'm going to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect with that. But I will have the habit of saying it myself but we should refer to them with, with pronouns because we're talking about the third iteration of God to, to, to humankind, okay? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Trinity, right? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are, we are Trinitarian believers, okay, uh, in the body of Christ. Now, uh, I've, I've heard it taught this was the most Sunday school basic example that blessed my life because anybody in the nation of Islam or any Muslim, they will challenge you. They will say you believe in three gods, all right? They will say you believe in three gods and because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so the Sunday school example that came to me was we're not talking about one plus one, plus one, we're talking about one times one times one, and that still equals one, all right? So, I thought that was phenomenal. I'm like, yes, bam, that's it. I'm going with that for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, uh, when you're dealing with the Holy Spirit, you have to deal with it from that perspective. The Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus, and Jesus is just as much Holy Spirit as God. And God is just as much Jesus as Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? We're talking, we're talking about all these different iterations, but we're talking about the same God. Now, here's the beautiful thing about it. Uh, we, we can only read about uh, the woman with the issue of blood. We can only read about the 5,000. We can only read about Jesus walking on water. We can only read about them in the Holy Scriptures. That's what we believe. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is for us. That is our iteration to receive, hear, and understand, all right? That's the beautiful thing about it. If you miss it, if you miss it, you'll miss all of it, but you have to understand it, all right? Now, taking notes, write this down. I said this Sunday, uh, sermonically, and I'm saying it, saying it again tonight, you must have an open mind, all right? You will have to have an open mind as it relates to, to the Holy Spirit because your understanding of the Holy Spirit, hear me, it should be challenged. Your understanding of the Holy Spirit at this point in your Christian walk should be challenged. All right? All right. It ought to grow a little bit. You ought to knock down a wall a little bit as it relates to the Holy Spirit. Uh, because a lot of people will, again, you'll see people, all we think the Holy Spirit is, is, is people being knocked out on the floor. All we think the Holy Spirit is people running around uncontrollably, uh, and, and that's what we think the Holy Spirit is. And that is a small, jaded, truncated understanding of the Holy Spirit that will never take us where we need to go. Every teacher in the classroom needs to be operating from the Holy Spirit. Every doctor in the hospital needs to be operating by the Holy Spirit. Huh? Every governmental official needs to be operating by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you, if you only keep the Holy Spirit in this box that's only good for us picking them up and putting them down in church, then we have now limited the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? 
all right? And we, we're going to see it. We're going to see it in Scripture, all right? Because uh, it, the, the Holy Spirit is powerful and it is ever-moving. I, I would suggest to you tonight, the Holy Spirit wants to do more. We won't let him, all right? The Holy Spirit wants to do a whole lot more, but we won't let him. We keep the Holy Spirit in a box, and the Holy Spirit has been trying to jump out of that box for centuries now. All right? So you must have an open mind. You must have an open mind. You must have an open mind, and you must also have an open heart. All right? You've got to have an open mind, and a closed and unbelieving mind will never receive the full power of the Holy Spirit. A closed and unbelieving heart will never receive the full power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm appealing to you tonight for a level of openness, not just for you all in the building, you all worshiping online. I'm appealing to you for us to receive the full power, God have mercy, of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to write it down. I want you to put it in your notes that you, I want to receive the full power of the Holy Spirit. The full. I want to receive it. I want to receive him in his fullness. All right? In his fullness. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for your life? It's awesome and it is powerful. And throughout the next coming weeks, we're going to study. We're going to dive deep into it. We're going to study as much as we can to get the full power. All right? All right. So if y'all if y'all just want to hear about tongues, this is not your Bible study. Because that is one facet. That is one facet. That is one facet of the Holy Spirit. All right? Now, we can argue back and forth all day long. There's no need to argue. We're going to study it from the Scriptures. And we will understand every gift of the, of the Spirit through the Holy Scriptures. All right? So, hear me. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying to appeal to us for openness. Okay? Again, you have to be open. God will never kick the door down in your life. All right? I don't know why we keep ascribing that to God like God is going, boom, that's not God's nature. God will never, ever kick down the door. If you want to receive the full power of the Holy Spirit, you've got to issue God an invitation. That is the only way that it's going to happen. God will not, God will not ever force God's self on you, ever. God won't do it. All right, God will not ever force God's self on you. God wants you to open yourself and say, God, I receive you. I want you. Come in. The door is open. Take over. Do what you do. Throw your weight around. Heal, deliver, set, however you want to move, move. But God is not going to just go, I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do today. No, that's not God's nature. That's not God's nature. And if if it's not God's nature, anybody who is doing it and trying to put it on the Holy Spirit, that ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It is all flesh. Anytime anybody tries to force something on you that has nothing to do with God, it has everything to do with flesh. All right? And for too long, too many people have done wayward, janky, messed up stuff in church and tried to put it off on God. That's not how God wants us to operate. God is a God of order, period. period. It is always in order. All right? All right. So, uh, there, there's, this, there's this text uh, because, you know, because God is not a party crasher. Uh, John, not John, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 right quick. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 11, and I'm going to give you all of these scriptures. I want you to study them, all right? Next couple of weeks, I want you to study them, all right? Matthew chapter number 3, um, verse number 11. And Matthew chapter number 3, verse number 11, it says, I, this is John talking, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry, he will baptize the Holy Spirit and fire. All right? I love it. John says, I'm not the one. There is one that's coming after me. 
King James says, the thongs of whose sandal I am not worthy of fat. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. All right? Hear me. Write this down. It's levels to this. It's levels to this. It is certainly levels to this. John says, I baptize you with water. How many of you have been baptized with water? You've been, you had baptism. How many of you all remember that baptism? Okay, praise the Lord. See, us Baptist folk, I'm saying us Baptists. We, we, <laughs> I'm AME, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'll be honest with you, one of my biggest struggles uh, when, when I moved from my home church to African Methodism was baptism. And right now today I have the same struggle. Okay, I do not believe that an individual should not remember when they were baptized. I don't believe that, okay? It is one of the most powerful things that an individual can experience, and it ought to be the decision of the individual. Now, here's the thing. Pastor, the discipline says that what you're supposed to do is honor the baptism that your parents gave you. In this crazy world that we live, I don't want to have to go look at pictures to see when I was baptized. I want to be able to look and say, date, time, it was cold. I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Chilled my body and not my soul. That's what I want to be able to say. It was on the, I was nervous. I was scared. But something came over me. I remember right now today, I remember how I felt when I went down. And I remember how I felt when I came back up. Right now today, and I was baptized at 13 years old under my own volition. Nobody made me do it. I did it because I gave my own heart to God. All right? And so I believe that. I believe that all of us should remember our baptism. All right? And I struggle. And y'all may get me in trouble with, with higher ups. It won't matter. I don't care because I want everybody <laughs> to remember when they were baptized. All right? I believe wholeheartedly in water baptism. Uh, now, what, here's another thing where I struggle. I struggle with sprinkling and pouring versus take, bringing immersion. All right? I believe grown folk, huh? Now, don't stop because I understand where I am. I've been doing this for years. Please know that I never stop uh, people from bringing their children. I never stop them from doing it. I, I take the babies. Pour the water, sprinkle on it, praise the Lord. But I'm like, hey, one day, little baby, uh -uh. <laughs> one of these days you're going to have to do this and remember what, what you're doing right. or honor what was done. All right. Uh, so I struggle with that because uh, grown folk need to get in that water. Praise the Lord. I'm just letting y'all know where I stand, so I don't want y'all to think that I'm crazy. All right. <laughs> Uh, baptism is in a couple of weeks, and we're going down in the water. I'm excited about it. I can't wait. All right? I can't wait for it. So, <laughs> he said, John says, I baptize you with water. But there's one that comes after me that will baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. Now, I won't ask you to raise your hands because I, this may be a place of struggle because we remember our water baptism, but do you remember your fire baptism? Arr. I won't ask you to raise your hand. Hear me. The next question then becomes, have I received the fire baptism? All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is going to get good. Amen. And it's all right if we wrestle and think and we go through and all of these different kinds. It's okay if we do this. That's the purpose of this. Okay, the purpose of it is to kind of wrestle, to go back and forth, to make sure we get it, to make sure we understand, make sure we can move forward with life because we don't ever want it to be something in God that we're missing on the earth. All right? So uh, they said, I've heard it said that real, uh, you know, we have the concept of going to hell. But there was also a, a concept presented that, that hell can also be getting to heaven and realizing everything that you missed on earth. All right? <laughs> so what I'm simply trying to say is that there is more of and there is more in God that we have available to us, but we stop short because we think that it's okay to just stop at water. And I'm here to tell you, seek fire. 
God have mercy. Matter of fact, we need to write that down, put it on a t-shirt. Seek fire. All right? And fire, hear me, fire will manifest in different ways. All right? All right, I want to say that. Now, I got people in the building who may argue me down. They say that there is one evidence. I believe that there are hundreds of evidence, and I'm willing to show you in the scriptures where there are so many different iterations that we miss because we don't see it. And you don't even sometimes, and sometimes you've been moving by the Holy Spirit, you haven't even realized it yet. All right? All right. So let's get into a little bit of it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's, let's talk about gifts of the Spirit a little bit. Let's talk about gifts of the Spirit a little bit. This is just the overview. We'll dive deeper. All right, 1 Corinthians, let's go chapter number 12. Oh, and I can't wait. We had a nice meeting on vacation Bible school today because those of you that cannot, don't know your way around the Bible, you will. Praise the Lord. You will know how to recite all 66 Bibles, uh, uh, <laughs> books of the Bible, all 66. Some of y'all didn't even know it was 66. Praise the Lord. Uh, 39 and old, 27 in the new. All right. First Corinthians. All right. Let me see. Let me see how I can say this. If you, the old folks would say, you ought to show some signs, right? You, you, it's easy to say you have something, but even if you're sick, there are symptoms, all right? Same concept of the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, there are signs, there are symptoms of the Holy Spirit. There are signs and symptoms of the Holy Spirit, all right? Because these gifts are amazing but we, the people of God, have got to get to a place where we understand that the gifts go way past music and singing. Why have we only made music and singing the only gifts? And pre that it's way more than that. I'm talking about way more than that. But we stop short. Oh, they have, they're anointed. Do you understand? Do you understand how anointed it is to do a budget? Do you know how much anointing lies in understanding numbers? There's an anointing there. Huh? There, there are people, there are people, that's just like uh, you, could, uh, you could teach Ray Ray to come in here and know lighting and sound. You could teach him, but there are some people that were born with the eye and the ear. Huh? There's something different there. Huh? There's something organic there that came right from the Spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now about gifts to the Spirit. All right. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. I'm in verse number 2 of chapter number 12, 1 Corinthians. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God say, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Verse number four, here it is. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. I'm in NIV. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. All right? Now, this is for, so if we're reading this, what, if Paul is addressing an issue by teaching this, nine times out of ten, what was happening? There were individuals who were, first of all, being out of order. All right? Being out of order ain't new in church. It started in the Bible. All right? Uh, there were also people who obviously were saying that they were under the unction of the Spirit and were saying crazy things. It ain't start now. It's been Bible. That's why we have most of the letters of Paul. Because there were people who were doing strange things in the assembly and Paul had to correct them. 
That's why we have the teaching right now today. All right? Look at what he says. It's, it's only one God. All of our gifts came from the same source. You see a river, all the river is supplied by the tributaries. It's one large river, but the water source is coming from the same way. All right? Different kinds of gifts, same spirit di distributed. Now, to one, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. I want you to write that down, underline it, put it in your Bible, study it at home, do the same thing. It is given for the common good. Everybody say common good. So hear me, the spirit is not going to benefit me and not you. Huh? The, the, the move of God is not going to benefit you and it won't benefit me. Every gift is given so that everybody can be built up. That's what it's there for, the common good. So all of us should walk away with something every time. Praise the Lord as it relates to the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. I'm in verse number 8, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. A message, message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, by the same spirit, faith. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. Now, for some reason, y'all, I don't know, we'll go toward gifts of healing, won't we? Huh? That's the one, that's the one everybody, we do, you know, we do, we want the profit that makes the most profit. Huh? So, we want the gift that, that looks like the one we ought to have, right? Oh, that's, that sounds like the good one. If you are praying for gifts right now, I don't know which one of us would pray for wisdom or faith or, or anything else, but boy, when it comes to healing, we'd be told, oh, Lord, do that one, Lord. Do that one. And what I'm trying to say to you is that there is not one gift that is more powerful than the next. Praise the Lord, because they're all given for the common Good. It's right here in the book. All right. Gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. Boy, everybody want to prophesy nowadays, won't they? Everybody want to, want to be able to, uh, your address is 4255. Your name is Mary Lee Simmons. Your name is Jackie. Everybody want to be able to prophesy nowadays. And right now, if, you, if a prophet come to town and they have a gift of prophecy, we'll flock over there in droves. Just, ooh, he was on, he was, we're, we're trying to be, get a word. I want a word for my life. Praise the Lord. But you got to understand it comes from the same spirit. Comes from the same spirit, because you must under. Now, the gift of prophecy, it is so real and it's so misused. It is so real and it's so misused. It is unfortunate that it has been misused so much. So much so that other people, please understand that everything that we see did not come from God. Everything that we experienced, did not, it, did not, it was not a God experience. And here you now are in a place of confusion, and God wanted you in a place of confirmation. All right? But that's what we do. We allow, we let, we allow people to say, and Bishop Murphy stood up here a couple of weeks ago and said, you can't let everybody teach you. you can't, because there is a spirit that is released when it comes to teaching. All right? You have to understand it. That is it a gift? Yes. Is it real? Yes. Has it been misused? Yes. All right. Let's keep moving. Miraculous power, uh, prophecy to another distinguishing between spirits. That's the one you need to be praying for right there. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. All right? Now, it's amazing how we'll skip over all of those other ones and we'll say that the evidence is tongues. It's a whole list here. Praise the Lord. If you have the gift, use the gift because they all came from the same place. All right, I'm moving. I know y'all quiet. And still another interpretation of tongues. Huh? All these are at work of one and of the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one of us as he determines. 
It's a whole bunch of these I prayed for I never got because God didn't determine to give it to me. But I fall on the list. And guess what? Every person in this building falls on the list. Praise the Lord. All right. You are not less than because you don't do one of them. You are not less than. You are no less saved. You are no less nothing because you don't do one of them. You are on the list. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I knew I was going to challenge you a little bit tonight. That, that's what I came here for. That's what I came here for. Skip down. Skip down to verse number 27. Same, same chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Skip down to verse 27. All right. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing. All right. I want to go back to this because we are so enraptured and so awe-inspired by titles, and we forget that for every title, there should be an anointing. Huh? These are not titles, and God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then Please understand, there is no delineation. All of these are gifts of the Spirit, not titles. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all don't like me tonight. I know y'all mad at me. Huh? It's a whole lot of titles. I could come in here. You get ordained online right now for the low, low cost of $19.99. We'll call you what you want. We can get you a red collar with a red, a white collar with a red shirt, a purple shirt. You can get a mitre. You can have on an alb. You can have a, a censure. It doesn't matter the clothes that you have on because you can look good on the outside and have no power on the inside. A title means nothing if you don't have the anointing that goes along with it. Huh? Huh? I'll come here and look holy if y'all want me to, or I could come in here and attract Adidas suit and have more power than anybody that looks like a pope coming sitting in the, in the church tonight. <laughs> huh? huh? We, we are letting garments make us. We're letting titles make us, and that's not what the Bible says. Huh? We're letting garments and titles make us who we are, and collars and chains and rings, and that means absolutely nothing if you don't have the power. Huh? So that's, that's, what, that's what God wants us from us. This is right here in the book. Huh? He gave apostles, second prophets, hear me, third teachers. Why don't we see if the titles are so amazing? Why don't we see people using teacher? Huh? We got bishops, and, we got, and we, we'll say pastor teacher, but we won't just say teacher. And there are anointed individuals in this place tonight that have the gift of teaching, not just in an education classroom. What are you saying, Pastor? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, number one, you'll do it for free. Number two, you'll do it in your sleep. Number three, you do it because you have no other choice. There are people right now who can walk. It's the difference in you trying your grandmother's recipe. Now, she could give you the recipe, but it don't taste the same. Because there is something about the way that she does it. You can do it. You can sit up there and watch her and do it the same way that she's been doing it for years. And you, it still won't taste the same. It's the same concept. You better believe that the Holy Spirit is in Tony Sanders right now for teaching. You better believe it. For babies. Huh? She wants babies right now. She'll take them right now. If 10 of them walk in this room, she will leave out of here and go into another room and start teaching babies because that's what she, you, you, you know, that's not just gift, that's anointing. 
That's the Holy Spirit on the inside of her that is working to bless babies. You got to believe that. Huh? That's what it's about. Do it. I do it in my life. I don't want, I like big church. I love it. But if you give me 10 babies, that's what I want to do. Huh? Apostles. Look at it. Prophets, teachers, then miracles. That's how we got so caught up on certain individuals. I won't call names. Gifts of healing. Oh, God, hear me. A gift of the Spirit. Somebody pull that in King James right quick. That same, that same uh, scripture, if you have it. In the King James Version, if you, if you have it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 27, starting at 27. Because this text says, I'm looking at it right now. It says, helping. That helping is a gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of helps. We, we, we've heard it. There are people that are anointed to help. There are people who God entrusted the Holy Spirit in for them to help. God have mercy. That is powerful. What would happen if if at least 10 people accepted their gift to help? God have mercy. That that's what you want to do. You, if you never get a plaque, God have mercy. If you never are out front, if nobody ever calls your name, the gift of help, it don't want to be seen. The gift of help, you'll tell the gift of help to come out, they'll say, no, 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 no. No, 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 I don't want, no, 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 don't call my name. I don't want to do that. All they really want to do is help. They don't care if you never call their name. They're satisfied if you are great. They're satisfied if your name is called. They're satisfied if they build you up. They find, there's, that's not a slave. They're not underneath. The gift of helps is just as powerful as an apostle. God have mercy. The gift of help is just as powerful as a bishop. It is just as powerful as everything else. But we are missing opportunities because we won't accept all the gifts. Ah, it's there. You have to accept all the gifts. I wish I had time here tonight. Uh, uh, and, I, and I said this before, I got a friend that say this all the time, that everybody wants to be a general. Nobody wants to be a sergeant. Everybody's always seeking general, and nobody wants to be sergeant. But what would happen if you accept the fact that you were just anointed to be a sergeant, and that is not beneath? That's not beneath. That is equal to because you understand who you are. Huh? It's powerful. It's powerful. (laughs) Many gifts, one body. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm moving. Here. All right. Anybody got King James? All right. You have Lady E? Do you have King James on that one? Okay, go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> because I, I want these words from, yes, good read. Go ahead. I, that, I, I can't say it no better myself. The scriptures are clear. Huh? Helping King, I mean, NIV says uh, gifts of guidance and of different kinds of tongues. Look at what it says. Are all apostles? The answer to these questions are no, is no, by the way. Uh, rhetorical questions. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. 
It's right there for us, y'all. It's right there for us. This is, this is powerful, I'm telling you, because it, it helps us to understand how the diversity of gifts that God has given to the body of Christ. And as we receive, as we are baptized with fire, what that might look like at any different day point in time. All right? And I, I believe that the manifestation of that is right here in this text. Let's move. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We, we, we're just perusing tonight. Can we casually saunter to, through the scriptures tonight? All right? I, don't, I, don't, I only have a few more minutes. Romans chapter number 12. Uh, verse number I'm going to give you verse number three, Romans 12 and 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, you apostles. No, that doesn't say that. That's, I added that part. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself in sober judgment. Y'all understand that, I'm sure. In accordance, accordance with the faith that God has distributed each one of you. For just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same functions, so in Christ, though many, we form how many bodies? One body. And each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, serve. That's a gift? You mean to tell me serving is a gift? Huh? If it is teaching, teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. That's a gift? If, you're, if it is giving, give generously. You mean to tell me giving is a gift? Why in the world have we not sought the gift of giving? Because it, guess what, y'all? If you have the gift of giving, if God bless you with the gift of giving, he can't give you what he ain't gave you. You can't give what he haven't given to you. Huh? So if you have the gift of giving, that means that there is a surplus for you to give from. Oh. Yeah. We praying for the wrong gifts. God, give me the gift of giving. God have mercy. Huh? Praise the Lord. I know, I know, I know. See, the, the, the more powerful place is not teaching. The most powerful place is unteaching. Because we have been, I mean, just stuff has been given to us for years. But it's so much more for us to understand. Huh? Look at what it says. All right, give. Uh, where we at? Where we left off? Verse number five. Uh, many members, one body. If it is serving, serve. I'm further down. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then encourage. If it's to give, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. I like the if on that. All right? If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. All right? We're talking about the gifts. These are all the gifts. And I think God has given us each of them by the Spirit of God. If we accept baptism by fire then we understand how powerful the gifts can be. All right, let me move just one second, and I'm going to cut y'all loose for the night. All right, I'm giving y'all this. I'm wetting your palate because we're going to break them down one by one uh, when we have time. Let's go because we got to go from uh, gifts to fruit. Praise the Lord. Ye shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Ye shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. The gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, Galatians 5, uh, verse number 23. Y'all will know these in your sleep. Well, let's start at 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, I love it because there is no S on that fruit. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy, peace, forbearance. I know what that is because I use it for my student loans. Kindness, <laughs> goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and what's the last one? Say it a little louder. Who's control? Mm, mm, mm. 
Boy, I swear, if we can control ourselves, we'd be better off. We go from gifts to fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. If you, ha- if you have the Spirit of the Lord, that there needs to be an orchard in your life. I have a friend that says that people always want to me- mentor him. He says, everybody wants to mentor me. I don't know why everybody wants to mentor me. I said, well, I don't know why everybody wants to mentor you. Uh, because, uh, number one, they don't know all of you. But then number two, um, what about them? What kind of fruit do they have that makes you want to align yourself with them any, anyway? Because see, most people want to get people under them, but you have to understand real mentorship is not people getting under you, it's who you can get under. All right, that's what the Spirit, that's what the Spirit of the Lord is all about, is about using your gifts to help pushing other people forward. And the gifts and the fruit, they work together because if you're going to really deal with us's, come on church, let's be honest. All right, you can have gifts all day, but if you don't have fruit, nobody will never trust your gift. I'm going to say it one more time just in case you were texting somebody. You can have gifts all day, but if you have no fruit, nobody will never trust your gifts. All right? So if I'm going to deal with y'all and you're going to deal with me, guess what? The first thing you got to have is a whole lot of love. You got to love when people don't love you back. You got to love when people get on your nerves. You got to love when you look at people's face and you know they're lying to you right in your face, but you got to love them anyway. You got to know, you know the truth, but you still got to deal with it. That's what the fruit, that's how you know people really have the spirit of the Lord. Huh? And in your humanness, you want to deal with them one way sin and deals with them another way. Have you been there? Huh? Have you been there? Sometimes we're there every day, right? You got some people right now who you had to stop texting, you had to put the phone down because they're messing up your, your inner peace. Huh? You got to deal with that. Love, joy, peace. The one I don't like talking about, patience. All right, I say that all the time. Ooh, I, I'm, a, I'm just praying, Lord. I just, oh, Pastor, I'm praying that the Lord would give me more patience. And I'm praying, I just thought, I just need to settle down and get more patience. But you know, I'm trying to figure out, and I prayed that prayer, and I'm trying to figure out, I'm, 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 I'm waiting on my job, I'm waiting on this to happen, and I'm waiting on that to happen, and I don't understand why the Lord is making me wait. Didn't you pray for patience? Huh? You know, it, it, have you ever been about... The, have you ever been running through an airport? And uh, my wife knows that I don't, they say an hour, I get to the airport at least an hour and a half or two hours early now because I've, I've ran through enough airports in my life. Let me tell y'all what that hurt is. That hurt is when you get to the gate and you already late and you run like crazy. You're sweating, you got your bags, you're out of breath, and that door closes as soon as you see it. Because when that door closed, they don't open it back up. Huh? And the airport will teach you patience. Huh? When you're ready to go, but you got to stay and wait when there's a delay on your flight or when the door closes and you got to wait till the next flight come, but there's a line over there for you to rebook. Huh? Patience is about waiting in line. That's what it's about. Huh? And uh, sometimes... Uh, Maturing helps us with patience a whole lot more. Praise the Lord. You have some children that have helped you with your patience, right? Huh? Huh? The Lord will give you that one that make you say, okay, Lord, all right, I got it. You got love, joy, peace, patience. What else? Huh? Kindness, goodness, forbearance, faithfulness, gentleness. I'm finished. I'm, I'm done, because I know y'all don't want to hear about gentleness. All right. We, we black, we aggressive. I don't know why we are so ready to show people how saved we are not instead of how saved we are. Uh, I used to be that way myself. Y'all pray for me. Because, you know, people try to try your age. They try your Jesus. They try your age. They try your Holy Ghost. 
And I was the quickest one to say, now don't mess with me now. Because I'm going to show you how far I, the Lord ain't take me yet. Uh, but gentleness comes in. And sometimes we know people that have that, it's, it, you could tell they have that fruit of gentleness. Some people know how to talk to you. Some people know how to make you feel better, don't they? Some people know, you already know, if I go over here, they're going to make me feel. I got a friend named Malone Smith right now. I don't talk to him about nothing no more. Because he makes me feel worse about every situation that I ever brought to him. <laughs> but I have other friends who I could call right now, and they'll make me feel so much better. Huh? Who's that person right now who, if something is going on, when you go to them, you can't talk, you just cry. Huh? You can't even get the words out, but the time you get to the frog is already in your throat. You got, that's, they have that gift, they have that fruit. That's a part of them. They know how to deal with you in the moment. I'm done. Self-control, that's a whole Bible study by itself. I ain't gonna even play with it tonight. Uh, that is part two, the sequel. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the reason why I, I went through this, I'm not clear. The reason why I wanted to go from it from this perspective because th there are major teachings out there as it relates to the Holy Spirit. We, we're going to do an in-depth study on tongues. We will talk about the gifts of tongues. We will talk about the interpretation of tongues. We will talk about what Paul meant in the scriptures as related to tongues. We will talk about the Pentecostal experience, the Azusa experience, all of these different things. I am married to a bona fide uh, Pentecostal woman. Uh, uh, bona fide, all right? Uh, <laughs> bona fide, tongue talking, uh, pick them up, put them down. Uh, my wife would, would do uh, in our church she would be praying and she would go off in the tongues and she would move the microphone. She would move the microphone because there, there's somebody that somewhere that believes that if, if there is never an interpreter present, then you should never speak in tongues. And I just don't think that's what the scripture meant when it was talking about that. Here's the thing. The gifts are given for the edification of the people. So if I'm standing up here and I'm speaking in more tongues then in a language that you, and you can understand, then I am in error because the objective for me standing here is for you to be edified. So if I've been talking to you for 45 minutes in another tongue, you are in confusion. That's what the Bible was talking about. There were people that were standing and teaching and preaching in all tongues and saying that they were operating by the Spirit of the Lord. But the, the teacher came back and said, no, that's not it. If you're going to stand and proclaim and teach, if you're going to be in that many tongues, have an interpreter present. Because speaking in tongues edified the person. But speaking in a language that you can understand edified you. The people that are under the instruction at the time. It's powerful, y'all. We miss it. And we have been so turned to the left and the right in these teachings that there are some things that we don't want to seek because we're scared of them. But I want you to do it. I want, I, I want to get to a place that every, every lawyer can have a spirit of discernment by the Spirit of the Lord on the inside of them and be moving by the unction of the Holy Spirit. I want, I want every doctor to be moving not only by their education and by their training and everything that they have received because of their study, and that's what they're supposed to do, but I also want them to be able to steal away. I, I don't know about y'all, but before you do any surgery on me, I want you to steal away and say, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, <laughs> I'm trained, but guide me still. Huh? I want, every, I, want, I want people who stand and talk on behalf of the marginalized and disenfranchised, I want them to be able to stand and speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now hear me, you remember Stephen in the Bible, he looked up and said, behold, I see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God. And the people were so mad that they tore their clothes and then they stoned Stephen. Huh? But can you still stand and speak and speak truth to power 
when you know that the results may not be how you want it to be. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. A spirit of boldness for you to be right when everybody is wrong. For you to stand down. For you to do it differently than what has ever been done. So that's what I want to do. All right, y'all, I'm done. Uh, y'all stand to your feet. Uh, in, in the next couple of weeks, in the next couple of weeks, let's study this together. Let's study this together. Study it on your own. Study these scriptures that we've given tonight. Study them on your own so that we can grow together in God by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I was, uh, because not only do we have these gifts and we have these fruit, but there are things that manifest in the worship experience when we all get together and we all believe together. I want Antavia and Latanya and whoever else is leading to be able to sing and her job is, their job is not karaoke. It is, their job is not being a place so you can get through security and come in church late. I want them to sing and to the power of God is manifested and is invited into the place. I want the scripture to be read so powerfully that it ushers us into the presence of God. It is the invitation. I I want the prayer that is prayed to be so powerful that it ushers us into the presence of the living God. I want, by the time it comes for preach, matter of fact, I want the word to have gone forth so powerfully in praise and worship and in scripture and prayer and everything else and giving and everything else that we do. I want it to be so strong that by the time we get to the preach word that a lot of the word is already gone forth. That's what I want to see. I want us to experience that. I want us to be in that place. Not just once a month. Every time we come into the house of God, I want us to experience the presence of God. So yeah, we can lay hands. We can lay hands. And, and when you're down, I want you to be able to feel something. I'll tell you this story and I'm done. There was, I was in, working on my doctorate at United in Ohio, and uh, we used to hang out, y'all, after class. I'm talking about we used to hang out and have a good time. But there was, there was these people that came in, and they were, if you ever heard of these different revivals that happen around the country, uh, I'll give you one. The Zeus revival we all know. Some of us have heard of Brownsville. Uh, it was in Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida, the Brownsville revival. They had church one night, and it just kept going and going and going and going for years and years. And it never stopped. And these people, and I can't remember which revival it was, but they were part of this particular revival. And they were coming to do a session for us that night. And uh, it was about 7 o'clock, and I was watching the clock, and I'm like, man, I hope they come on because we hang out, we hanging out tonight, and we're going to have a good time. And I'm just ready for this part to be over. And they were teaching, and they were saying that they were having these revivals, and things would start manifesting. And people were healed, and people were set free, and people would come in one way and they would leave another way. And they would say the Spirit of the Lord would manifest. Some spoke in tongues. Some were able to interpret the tongues. Some had gifts of healing. They would feel the power of the Lord on them. Some of them would lay hands, and, and people were just laying out all out on the floor. And I was like, oh, man, God, can we come on, please? Not another one of these. But they begin to speak so powerfully and teach so powerfully that I said, okay, God, if it is something that I am supposed to receive from this tonight, I lifted my hands while they were still teaching, and I said, God, I open myself to you. I open myself to your move. I open myself to what they're saying. If there is something, it's not that I don't believe. I believe in everything that they're saying. But if it's something that I'm supposed to receive from it, God, I open myself 
to you. And they said, okay. After they talked for a little while, they said, okay, we just want you to stand and get in the circle. And if you just want us to pray with you, if you just want us to pray with you, get in the circle. And there was a big circle over there. I didn't go to that circle. There was a smaller circle forming over here. I scooted to that circle. And they were walking around, and I, I, I began to see different things happen. I, be, I began to see different things happen in the, the experience. And by the time they got to me, they laid hands on me. And I felt the power of God so strong that all I could do, because you know, have you ever been in those services where you say, oh, I ain't going down. Oh, I ain't going. They can lay hands on me all day. I ain't going down. Let me tell you, I know what the carpet feels like in the Marriott Hotel in Dayton, Ohio, because I went, I had no trouble, my whole body gave in. And while I was down there on the ground, I, I began to just begin to thank God. And there was an outpouring from my spirit of just thanksgiving and praise. All I could say was, thank you, God. Thank you for allowing me to experience this tonight. Thank you, God, because I opened myself. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be a part of this tonight. Tears, I couldn't stop crying. I could not stop crying, I could, and I couldn't get up. But guess what? I didn't want to get up. I just wanted to lay and bask in the presence of the Almighty God. Huh? And then this was the first guy that went, one of his helpers came around very gently, just, oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. And when they got to me again, I fought all over again. I couldn't move. And all I can say, God, thank you for doing it in me. So that's what I want you to do tonight. I want you to lift your hands to God. And I want you to say, God, I'm open to receive every gift of the Spirit that you have for me. God have mercy. God, do it for your people. Do it for your people. Do it for your people. Do it for your people, it for your people God. Hallelujah. you to do, what I want you to do is I want you giving you an assignment. I want you to open up the spaces of your life and your heart to the power of the Holy Spirit. When I accepted my call to ministry, Prophet Brian Faircloth, he, he confirmed my calling and uh, Brian gave me an assignment in that moment, and I give you the same assignment. He said, man of God, I was 18, I was 17. He said, man of God, this is what I want you to do. He said, the first thing I want you to do is pray that God will give you the gift of discernment. He said, the second thing I want you to do, he says, I want you to take this oil, and I want you to anoint everything that belongs to you. I want you to anoint your room. I want you to anoint your closet. I want you to anoint the hangers that your clothes hang on. I want you to anoint every single thing that belongs to you. And I want you all to do the same thing. I want you to anoint your homes, your rooms. I want you to anoint your beds. I want you to anoint your cars. God have mercy. I want you to anoint your offices. I want you to anoint your spaces. Because I really, really, really want God to do something special and powerful in your life in these next 50 days. I want God to begin to speak to you in pure and powerful ways that you'll never, ever doubt the power of God ever again in your life. 
There is something God wants to do in you and something God wants to do for you. But God will not kick your doors down. You have to invite God in. So that's why the song says, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place. Feel the atmosphere. Your glory, Lord, is what my heart longs for, to be overcome by your presence. Next part says, let us become more aware of your presence in our lives. So God, as we leave this place tonight, we want to become more aware of your presence in our everyday lives. Walk with us, talk with us, be with us. And as we leave this place, we invite you into our space now and forevermore. People of God said, amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Whatever seed you, 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 the, you and the Lord work on, you all give your seed tonight. We have ushers or individuals on the door. You can also give online as you leave tonight. If you're online, you can give via our online apparatuses. God bless y'all. We'll see y'all again soon. Love y'all.